change the face of the court. That's a great point. This is all about politics within the Democratic Party. Well, you just referenced the 2018 Senate map, which I can count to four, maybe five because of that. I can't yet count to eight, which is what they need to overcome, which is what Democrats need to provide to kill the filibuster. I think Democrats need to decide if they're going to take the short-term view, possibly angering their base. In the meantime, take the long-term view. Because if they do not filibuster this, and if Mitch McConnell doesn't have to use the nuclear option to change the rules, I think they can set themselves up to be in a better position to influence President Trump's next Supreme Court nominee if somebody retires than if they just change the rules, in which case Trump doesn't even have to consider how the next Supreme Court justice would pick, would look, or how to get them through the Senate. But if they decide to just go to the map over this one, then he won't have to take Democrats into account. That's such a good point. That is such a good point. Democrats give up their leverage for a next pick if they go to the map on this one. The next one could matter immensely because this is, again, a younger Scalia or Pisces Scalia or Jew point, not a big shift in the ideological balance of the court. But a lot of people also think, a lot of conservatives say Justice Kennedy in private conversations says he wants to retire, and Neil Gorsuch is a former clerk of Justice Kennedy, that he thinks, oh, Trump's doing well here, he's picking good guys, maybe he'll go. That's the swing vote on the court. We'll see. This debate will end probably in about 70 days. That's the average run time for a Supreme Court nominee. Sometimes they look very different at the end, as they do at the beginning. Go back in your history books. But how you frame the beginning matters. Listen to the Senate Republican leader, the majority leader, Mitch McConnell, a few moments ago on the Senate floor, trying to set the standard here. Judge Gorsuch received a unanimously well-qualified rating by the American Bar Association when he was nominated to his current position on the Court of Appeals. And he was confirmed without any votes in opposition. That's right, Madam President. Not a single Democrat opposed Judge Gorsuch's confirmation. Not Senator Barack Obama. Not Senator Hillary Clinton. Not Senators Joe Biden or Ted Kennedy. I don't know if that history will matter, but that's well played, including Senator Obama, then Senator Obama, now former President Obama, was a classmate at Harvard. Judge Gorsuch. That's right. And it also sort of underscores the degree to which this potential new justice is a card-carrying member of the establishment. Right. For all of the disruptive things that Trump has done, this is not one of them. And the question for a lot of people in Trump's orbit, both the Republican leadership in Congress and even people inside the White House who are, as Abby mentioned, sort of at war with each other in different camps, divided as to the approach he would take toward different things. What signal is President Trump going to take from how well this rollout is perceived as having gone? Will he take a signal, oh, I could make less trouble for myself by doing more things this way, doing more things in the normal way and the establishment way? Does he want to make less trouble? Or does he want to 